Welcome to The Gut Show. I'm Erin Judge, registered dietitian and founder of Gutivate, and I will be your host. My goal on this side of the internet is to empower those with IBS and digestive disorders to understand their guts better, to have a healthier relationship with their bodies, and make confident choices to improve their digestive health. During this season of The Gut Show, you can expect a weekly conversation covering a hot topic related to health, digestion, and IBS. As a disclaimer, I am a dietitian, but I'm not your personal dietitian. Everything we cover in this episode is meant to be educational and not a substitute for personalized care from your healthcare team. Before we dive into today's episode, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Are you looking to add more prebiotic fiber into your diet? If so, Sun Fiber can help. With one scoop, you can add five to seven grams of soluble, non-fermentable, and prebiotic fiber into your day. This will help you feed your beneficial gut bacteria, help keep your bowels regular, and support your overall health. Talk with your trusted healthcare provider to see if this is the right fit for you. And then you can find your favorite Sunfiber containing products at sunfiber.com. You can also save 20% off your order with code GUT20. Now let's get into today's episode. It is time for a conversation that so many ask for, and that is the relationship between your thyroid and your gut. I feel like this is a topic sort of like menstrual cycles for women in IBS and or menstrual cycles and digestive symptoms, the conversation around your thyroid function and your health, more specifically your digestion and and symptoms there should be something that we talk about earlier in the process when we are meeting with doctors or even really in health classes. I don't know if that's something that is covered now that wasn't you know, whenever I was a kid, which was a long time ago. Um, But even in becoming a dietitian, we rarely talked about the thyroid and how it can impact symptoms and that manifestation of symptoms that people experience, especially in this IBS world. And in some cases I've seen people get misdiagnosed with IBS when the thyroid might actually be the driver. I've also seen just a really close interconnected relationship through long-term IBS and other gut, um, you know, disorders and conditions. So let's talk a little bit about what, what is going on here and get a better understanding of what the thyroid actually does and what it means when these hormones are off. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit more about how this can actually impact the gut so that you can take that information and decide what you want to do with it. This episode is not here to diagnose anything. It is purely educational so that you can be more informed about how your body is meant to function and what can malfunction. And then it is important to take that information to your trusted healthcare providers so that you can determine what steps to take next. All right. So let's talk about what the thyroid actually is. The thyroid is a small butterfly shaped gland. So it has like a butterfly shape to it, which is kind of fun at the front of the neck above the Adam's apple. So if you don't have a clear Adam's apple, just think front of the neck. This is part of what we call the endocrine system, or I like to call this more of the hormonal system, which is a network of glands that produce and release hormones into the bloodstream to regulate different functions in the body. Now, whenever we talk about your hormones, think of these as like an office manager um, or a wedding planner. They are there to gather information and then go out and make sure that that information is being communicated properly. And it's also being executed properly. So they're very type A, right? Organizers in the body when they are healthy and functioning properly. Now the production and the release of hormones from the thyroid, which we call our thyroid hormones are tightly controlled by the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland that are both found in the brain. So the hypothalamus releases thyrotropin hormone or TRH, which then signals the pituitary gland to release thyroid stimulating hormone, which is TSH, which you probably have heard of. Then TSH stimulates the thyroid gland to produce and release T4 and T3, which are kind of the two major thyroid hormones. So think about it as your hypothalamus starts, so it releases a hormone. That hormone then signals the pituitary gland to release a hormone. That hormone then signals the thyroid gland to produce hormones. So whenever we're thinking about monitoring thyroid function, it's important that we look at these different hormones, but we understand 
where they're coming from and what their role is. For example, TSH, if the level is too low, meaning it's not being produced, you may catch it low. What that should mean, and it will likely mean down the road, is that it's not there to then stimulate the thyroid gland to produce T3, T4 properly, right? Um, those are signals that we want to look for. Now, with the T4 and T3, T4 is also known as thyroxine. T3 is triodothyronine. <laughs> Lots of long words there. It doesn't matter too much. Just understand T3, T4. These are thyroid hormones. These are there in your body to help regulate metabolism, which is the way that your body converts food to energy and also utilizes nutrients that are coming in for different functions in the body. So metabolism primarily is energy, but can also involve the use and is coordination, if you will, or um, distribution of different nutrients that are coming in. So beyond your metabolism, thyroid hormones can also impact different functions in the body. This can include growth and development. Um, these hormones are essential and, and they play a role in uh, growth and development for children and adolescents through those different stages, including the development of the brain and the skeletal system likely related a bit to the metabolism process. These hormones are responsible for an impact body temperature. Your thyroid gland actually regulates temperature by controlling the rate at which the body produces heat. So it utilizes the hormones to the production of heat as an energy conversion, right? And so they're utilizing the hormones and their function to then regulate temperature as well. Heart rate and blood pressure, the thyroid hormones can influence um, this through the heart contractions, the strength of those, and even the, just the rate that the heart is beating. And this will in, increase or decrease blood flow and then subsequently blood pressure and also muscle function. Um, thyroid hormones are there to help with, just like with the, the blood, right? The strength of contractions and release and the way things are pumping in the heart. This also can be applicable to muscles, other muscles in the body. So the thyroid, you know, we talk about it often in terms of metabolism, but there are other pieces of that puzzle in your body that the thyroid is playing a role. And if we simply just say, okay, thyroid and weight gain, those are connected, which is where we hear about this the most. I think we're missing out on opportunity for assessing and monitoring thyroid function and supporting that in the role of other conditions, like even heart disease, right? If we're thinking about blood pressure, um, then that's something that we may consider, you know, assessing the thyroid function for. Now, this is also where digestion fits in. So how does the thyroid influence digestion? So number one is the metabolism of nutrients, right? We've already talked about this, but metabolism happens primarily in the gut where your body breaks down processes and absorbs, you know, the different nutrients that you are eating um, and your thyroid hormones are part of that process. So they can influence the actual utilization of those nutrients. We also know that thyroid hormones can impact gallbladder function, meaning they can influence the production and flow of bile, which is there to help break down all nutrients, but primarily your fats. These hormones also impact gut motility. Again, the contraction, the release of those gut muscles, which is peristalsis or the movement of your gut. Um, and if they're off, that can lead to hypo or slow motility or hyper fast motility. They can influence acid production in the stomach, which then influences the breakdown in, of proteins, um, the digestion of other nutrients and absorption of things like B12 um, and even motility overall and how you feel. Um, low stomach acid has been associated with bloating, slow motility, and in some cases, even the feeling of heartburn and reflux. And then thyroid hormones are also thought to impact the gut microbiome. This is an area that is a little bit newer and, and needs to be more defined through research, but they may have a role in shaping the gut microbiome, uh, which then would impact digestion, motility, function of the gut overall. So when we're thinking about the gut and the thyroid gland and, and thyroid function overall, there is an interconnected relationship. And we knew this because we know 
thyroid or the gut and hormones are interconnected, right? There are hormones that are um, produced by the gut and interact with the gut. And so there's a very clear connection between the endocrine system and the digestive system, but getting even deeper into that web of connections, the thyroid and the gut are even more interconnected um, than maybe even some other processes in the body. Um, and so we can't ignore the function of the thyroid when we're looking at the function of the gut and even conditions like irritable bowel syndrome that impact the function of the gut. All right. So now what are you actually looking for that would showcase dysfunction and what does that mean? Right. What are the, I guess, definitions of this dysfunction? So the first thing that we want to look at are your labs. Typically the main lab that's run and, and, and part of uh, kind of even an annual panel that you may get from your doctor would be the TSH lab value. Now there is a, a wider range that's typically there, more of an optimal range that you would like to shoot for, or you kind of want to be close enough to at least is 0 0.8 to one for TSH. Now free T3, reverse T3 and free T4 are also labs that you can request that can give you even more information about what all might be going on with your thyroid. These are helpful if you have a practitioner that understands these um, relationships, right, of, of the values and where things might rise and fall and what that could mean for your care. Um, and so you may have this requested by a specific provider doing this on your own may not give you as much of that information. It's best to make sure that your provider understands what they're running um, or requesting and then what to do about it. But when we're looking at free T3, your optimal range is three to four. Reverse T3, we want this under 15. And then free T4, we want it to be around one to 1.3. Those are more optimal ranges. Now your personal individualized range might be different, right? So if you're working with, especially an endocrinologist or someone who is more specialized in, in the care of maybe a condition, if you have a thyroid condition, which we're gonna get into in a bit, then they may have a different range that they are setting for you, but this is more of a general optimal range to start with and just understand maybe what your labs are telling you or giving you warning signs of. Now for a short break to hear a word from our sponsor. We all know by now that fiber is essential for gut health, but for many people, increasing fiber rich foods can lead to more discomfort, more bloating, more gas, and overall frustration. Or the increase in fiber intake becomes difficult to sustain every single day, especially when it comes to travel and changes in routines. Today's sponsor, Sun Fiber, can help. Sun Fiber is a prebiotic fiber supplement that is gut friendly as a soluble low FODMAP option. Since it mixes into water or food without adding any color, texture, or flavor, that means that you can easily add this into your routine to support your gut without the symptoms. I personally love how easy it is for me to take sun fiber with me when I travel so I can stay consistent with my fiber intake and keep my gut moving. I also feel confident feeding beneficial microbes when I incorporate sun fiber into my daily routine. So whether you use sun fiber daily to support your gut microbiome or as needed to keep your fiber intake consistent, this may be a great option that your gut will love. Talk with your trusted healthcare provider to see if this is the right fit for you, and then find your favorite sun fiber containing products at sunfiber.com. You can also use the code GUT20 to save 20% off your order. Now, what does it mean then for your thyroid to malfunction? The two primary things that happen with the thyroid is that it either produces too much thyroid hormone, which is called hyperthyroidism, or produces too little thyroid hormones, which is called hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism can lead to symptoms of fatigue, commonly associated with weight gain, sensitivity to cold, and even depression. And then in the gut specifically, this is going to lead to slow motility, poor stomach acid production, delayed bile flow, and then that can lead to constipation and bloating and may even open the door for possible bacterial overgrowth like we see in SIBO because of that impact on motility. Now, hyperthyroidism, where we're producing too much um, thyroid hormone, this can lead to a rapid heartbeat, um, so um, increased heart rate, weight loss, nervousness, so kind of that on edge feeling, and heat sensitivity. And in the gut, this may lead to hypermotility or going things moving too fast, which can then lead to diarrhea, urgency, and even loose stools. 
Now, when we're thinking about hyperthyroidism, the most common cause of this is actually an autoimmune condition called Graves' disease. Um, and that is where we are producing too much thyroid hormone. I feel like Graves' disease is honestly less talked about than what we're going to see in Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is where there's inflammation of the thyroid gland, and that can lead to less production. And then we can see that as more of a severe side of hypothyroidism. Um, that's talked about a lot more frequently than Graves' disease. Um, both of these can actually be tested for through antibodies. So we may run more antibodies um, or labs um, to, to test these. When it comes to Hashimoto, so if you're dealing with hypothyroidism, it's really important to also check for TPO antibodies to look for Hashimoto's. Um, and then if you're running high, then you can ask your doctor to, to look for other antibodies to look for Graves. And then there's one other thing that can happen that can contribute to malfunction of the thyroid gland that has nothing really to do with really not the thyroid gland itself, which is interesting. And that is a goiter. So this is where you actually have an enlarged thyroid gland that is caused by typically an iodine deficiency or other underlying causes. So the thyroid itself is not the main driver of this, um, but because of something else, typically iodine deficiency, then we see an enlargement of that gland, which then impacts the production of hormones. So that would be something that also might be checked. They can kind of feel around and even see that sometimes. So that usually will be assessed whenever we're looking at abnormal labs, but it's something you can also ask your doctor about, and you can even uh, test iodine labs if you need to, to see if you have a deficiency, if you're concerned that that could be impacting your thyroid function. Now, there are a lot of other things that can also impact thyroid function. The most common thing is actually stress. So outside of the autoimmune conditions, which can even be triggered by stress, stress can play a huge role in how the endocrine system as a whole functions, but especially the thyroid, and can be one of the top causes of hypo and hyperthyroidism. Now, the stress isn't always just mental and emotional. Uh, we've talked about this in, in detail, right, on, on this podcast. We've talked about the gut-brain connection and how different stressors may play a role with your gut. The same is true with your thyroid gland. Stress from chronic illness can play a role, and this can um, be where we maybe see some overlapping autoimmune conditions together, um, which we can see in a lot of, uh, like even with like celiac disease, or we may even see this in the connection between IBD, inflammatory bowel disease, and Hashimoto's or, hypo, or even Graves disease. Um, but we also see this if, let's say, you're, you've been fighting cancer, or you've been dealing with um, even long COVID, we saw this, right? The body's under significant amount of stress as it's trying to repair and heal and recover and fight. That is a stressor. Stress can also come from poor sleep, right? Sleep deprivation can be a huge cause. Overworking, no boundaries, uh, traveling and, and, you know, kind of running at both ends. There's a lot that can go into this that goes beyond just this feeling of stress that you may have, like, right? And, and, we also can include that too, anxiety, um, stressors like family relationships or responsibilities. There's so much that can go into that. When you're under chronic stress, that's when things start to maybe go downhill. And so that's where that optimal lab range is really helpful to see where you may be trending, especially if you've been under a lot of stress. And ideally, we want to correct in order to then not necessarily repair because um, the damage isn't necessarily needing to be repaired, but we do want to stabilize function of the thyroid gland as soon as we possibly can. Um, in some cases that may require medication. In some cases it may not. That's really up to you and your healthcare provider of how you want to address that side of it. So now where does the gut fit in on the inverse side of that relationship, right? Just like the gut brain connection where the brain impacts the gut, the gut impacts the brain. There's also a bit of an inverse relationship between the thyroid, uh, thyroid function and your gut and gut function. Um, it's a little less understood from the gut side compared to the thyroid side, because we know that certain symptoms from the gut are directly related to what's going on in the thyroid, but there can be a relationship. One is the relationship of stress. So if there's stress going on in your gut, maybe from low grade immune activation, um, the body fighting a, an illness or like an infection of some sort, or even overgrowth, um, or the presence of inflammation, like we may see in celiac disease, diverticulitis, um, and IBD. 
all of those things can contribute to uh, stress in the body, which may contribute to more um, thyroid malfunction. Um, but the gut microbiome is also kind of a center point in this conversation. There is some thought that dysbiosis in the gut microbiome or that unideal of gut microbe makeup, whether that be poor diversity, less of the good guys or more of the harmful guys, um, that this could possibly alter the immune response, which promotes inflammation, reduces immune tolerance, and may set the stage for um, even the autoimmune manifestation, which is where we may see Hashimoto's or um, Graves' disease pop up. There is also a thought that the gut microbes themselves, and especially some of these more pathogenic microbes, can inhibit TSH, um, which is going to then reduce thyroid hormones, right? Because TSH is not stimulating that production from the thyroid gland. And then we also know that gut microbes can impact the absorption of certain minerals that are important for thyroid function. So it's kind of like gut microbes as the first layer, and then um, deficiencies of nutrients as the second layer, then leading to the thyroid malfunction. These nutrients can include um, iodine, selenium, zinc, and iron, and all of these are essential for thyroid function. So if you are deficient in these minerals related to gut microbes or even your diet um, and, and behaviors there, then that can impact the function of your thyroid really starting from the gut. And in addition to all of that, the gut microbes do function also as a reservoir for T3. Um, and so they could prevent thyroid hormone fluctuations, which would then um, kind of impact that overall balance, right? So they have this, this interesting relationship. Again, from the gut side, it is a little less understood, but it does showcase the role of maybe focusing on gut microbiome health. Uh, which is only going to benefit other systems in the body as well, digestive function overall, you know, health outcomes. But that could be a piece of the puzzle when we're thinking about either treating, you know, hypohyperthyroidism, um, working on, you know, Hashimoto's management or Graves' disease, any of these things that may be going on with the thyroid. The downside of gut you know, gut and thyroid relationship is that they can negatively impact each other and I see this a lot in, in some of the clients that I work with that are dealing with this is they can kind of create a negative feedback loop where it seems like things spiral fast out of control. And because you're at the bottom of both, right? Digestion is not at its best. Gut microbiome is not at its best. And then thyroid functions on at its best, which leads to how you feel, right? Sluggishness, your energy, um, weight fluctuations, like it can really throw you off and it can be hard to kind of come out of. Um, and that's, a, it really sucks, right? Uh, the good side of this relationship is that when we do start working on both of these, if we're addressing them properly, including IBS or just the symptoms themselves, as well as the thyroid, that we typically will see really great progress in both. So it'll be hard. It's sort of like climbing a mountain, right? Where getting started is really hard, but they, then we are able to create sort of a positive feedback loop where we're supporting one and it's functioning better and that's supporting the other and it's functioning better and then it's supporting the other and that's supporting the other and they are helping each other out. And so we can see a lot of great progress again, when we are approaching it properly, while also keeping in mind what was kind of driving all of this to begin with and has that been dealt with um, in any way possible. And again, that could include medication. It likely will include diet changes. It most likely will include lifestyle changes. There's a lot of ways of approaching this and it depends on where you're at, what is possible to even change, like what options you truly have, your history and, and other factors and layers that are present and also kind of where you're starting in this place. So how severe your, your gut symptoms and what are your thyroid labs actually looking like? Um, the more significant that disruption, the more tools we may need to use, which again, medication may really fit for even a short time uh, versus if things aren't quite as significant and severe yet, we don't want to ignore it until it gets really bad, but we may be able to use the less tools and see a benefit there.
Uh, I, I've been very excited to share this conversation with you. I know that even in, in this conversation so far, we've probably scratched the surface. There's a lot that can go into this, um, including really how to get on top of it, which truly is individualized more than anything. But I hope that this has at least opened your mind to think a little bit about what else and, and what layers may be happening inside of you. Um, and what may be impacting the way that your body is communicating things to you and those signals that your body is sending. And if even at the very least, if this gives you one conversation to bring up with your healthcare providers to get better solutions in place, I feel like it is considered a win. So please let me know what you thought um, from this episode, what your takeaways are. If you want to add to the conversation, you can do so in our Facebook group, which you can find linked in the show notes. You can also um, send us a, a message or post on your story. Just tag me at erinjudge.rd on Instagram um, so that we can kind of see what you're talking about and thinking as well and share that with our community. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the episode. Next week, we're going to go kind of in a similar direction a little bit, like uh, addressing one of, one of those drivers we talked about. And we're going to cover the nervous system and why you can't out supplement or out diet a poorly regulated nervous system, how that is essential when it comes to digestive health and also thyroid function. So join us next week. We'll see you there. And thank you for tuning in. Do you want to keep learning from me in bite-sized pieces, as well as even be able to ask me questions and get those answered? If that is true, then you should follow me on social media so that you can learn from myself, but also my incredible team. You can find us on Instagram at erinjudge.rd or at getavate. You can also find us at TikTok, same name. And then you can also find us if you're not already on YouTube, on YouTube for longer and shorter videos than the one that you listened to today. And if you're someone who really does enjoy compiled information from different brands we trust and the recipes that we enjoy, then you can also follow us on Pinterest where you can see our own boards, but also the boards that we have been able to compile other great IBS friendly links and resources for you. 